Welcome to General Assembly. We gather this year with our hearts still heavy from the murders in Orlando. 49 people killed as they celebrated community in the sanctuary of a gay club. We gather here reminded of how differences of sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, and religion continue to be exploited to justify violence. Our General Assembly theme this year is Heartland, where faiths connect. Unitarian Universalists have always drawn inspiration and wisdom from many religious traditions. We have a history of working together with other faiths for justice. The times in which we live demand that we work together as never before that we move from cooperation to active collaboration. At their best, the great religions have sought to break down barriers. Judaism united the tribes of Israel. The early Christians created a religion that transcended ethnic and cultural boundaries. Islam's insistence that there is no God but God is a way of declaring that the tribal gods that divide people are false idols, that we are ultimately one people. We come from different traditions and from different lands, but today we all live among one another. We share a common destiny. In that sense, we are truly one people. We must learn again that the tribalisms that divide us are false idols. At this GA, we are honored to have longtime partners in international interfaith engagement with us. From one of Japan's most historic Shinto shrines, the Tsubaki Grand Shrine, we're honored to welcome Guji Yamamoto and Reverend Ochai. And from our longtime Buddhist partners from Japan, the Risho Kosakai, Reverend Nomoto, Ms. Kaze, and Ms. Hirota. Wonderful partners. We are also honored to have leaders of different American faiths with us. With me, on the stage are Rabbi Rick Jacobs, President of the Union for Reform Judaism, and the Reverend John Dorhauer, General Minister and President of the United Church of Christ. And, and, I'll say a few words. Naeem Baig, President of the Islamic Circle of North America, was to have been with us. He won't get here until tomorrow. He will participate in our public witness event. I would like to invite uh, Rick Jacobs and then John Dorhauer to say a few words. Good evening. Religious life isn't about organizations or budgets or buildings. It's about living lives of depth and dialogue, purpose, and character. Of course, it's easier said than done. We're put on this earth with a sacred mission. There are a whole lot of people counting on us to fulfill that mission. And where are those people? Wherever we look. The modern Jewish philosopher Emmanuel Levinas taught that we come into the world already obligated by the mere gaze of the other, a gaze that demands from us a response. If we open our eyes, we will be obligated to respond to much pain 
and much injustice in our world. Bonds of love and our dedication to do good and seek justice for all bind us together tonight. We share an agenda which is at once ancient and all too contemporary, feeding the hungry, removing the stumbling block before the blind, speaking out against injustice, and paying the labor a fair and timely wage by creating courts of justice and an economy that benefits all. We know the work we are called to do. Our common agenda is based on seeking and engaging for the good of all, both here and across the world. We must all engage, not disengage, from the hard conversations and the personal witness to see each and every person as created in the image of God, and there are no exceptions. Even and especially in the Holy Land itself, Israel, where we should not disengage or step away because actions like divestment and disengagement harden the hearts instead of bringing people together. I understand that this assembly will consider a resolution to support divestment from companies that do business in Israel, I would not be doing my job, my sacred job representing our movement, and not my job as being your true friend if I did not say clearly that the overwhelming majority of your American Jewish brothers and sisters oppose BDS, boycott, divestment, and sanctions because it is an effort ultimately to delegitimize the very existence of the State of Israel. I speak for the largest segment of American Jewry, and I'm proud to say that our reform movement has a long-standing policy of opposition to the Israeli settlements. Every day, the occupation causes pain and hardship to too many Palestinians, and only two states for two peoples living side by side in peace will allow this tragic conflict to end. <laughs> Divestment will not build the two-state Israeli peace camp that we need, but rather strengthen the maximalists on both sides. Make no mistake. Those few American Jews who support divestment are a minority of a minority of our community. Love your neighbor as yourself must include the Jewish people in addition to the Palestinian people. My faith, and I believe yours as well, demands nothing less. Yours is not a choice between good relations with your Jewish neighbors and a witness for Palestinians. There is a different choice, that your approach, your actions, your rhetoric can acknowledge the truths and achievements and the failures on both sides and hold all to the same moral standards. Let us work together for a just solution, not march separately. I urge you. I urge you to reject divestment from Israel. Divestment will have no impact on the companies that are targeted. Its only impact on Israeli decision-making will be to harden the positions of those who least desire justice for the Palestinians. The Holy One loves when we stand together, work together, and build together. As the psalmist said, Hine matovu manayim shevet achim gam yachad, how good it is, how precious it is when brothers and sisters dwell together as we do in friendship. Shalom.
Good evening. It's a unique honor to be invited to speak and certainly to share the stage in the dais with these two outstanding leaders. As a Christian, I am taught that we are created in and created for love. The pursuit of shalom, the work of building the beloved community is a noble calling. And our Creator's vision of a world at peace and in right relationship is, I believe, human community's greatest aspiration. We are living, however, in a world where divisions of every kind are threatening to undo human community as we know it. And the wasting of Earth's precious resources for the sake of material gain and capital investment not only has us all fearful for the ongoing health of Mother Earth, it has human populations from across the globe on the move. Wars and famine and avarice are stretching us all to the limits of our ability to absorb this trauma. And narratives that other others predominate, conditioning people to live out of a modality of scarcity. And in these narratives, the other becomes a threat and induces fear. And fear will always engender one of two responses, fight or flight. We must either, from a position of fear, eliminate the danger or run from it. I believe if Christianity as a world religion is to have any relevance, its narrative of the love of neighbor and of welcoming the stranger must be clearly, passionately, and cleverly articulated. And the Christianity to which I commit myself is one in which partnerships and collaborations with all faiths make possible the shared pursuit of the common good. And the Jesus that I will worship is not one who stands above any other, but beside them as a source of wisdom, inspiration, and hope. God is love. And I want my faith to do little more than inspire me to love all that her hands have made. Thank you. Thank you both so much. We live in a time when the voices of fear and division are strident and loud. May this heartland General Assembly be a time of strengthening the bonds among our people. At this General Assembly, in programs and worship services, in action and study and acts of generosity, person to person, 
we will make our faith real and build our interdependent future. May we now enter deeply into the spirit of our tradition with our celebration of the more than 1,000 covenanted communities within the one Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. Pray with me. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come yet again, come. Lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come. Come, come, whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come. you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair, come yet again, come right here, right here, right now, there is no other place I'd rather be, right here, right now, there is no other place I'd rather be. Right here, right now, there is no other place I'd rather be. Right here, right now, watching the world wake up from history. Right here, right now, there is no other place I'd rather be. 
right here, right now. There is no other place I'd rather be. Right here, right now. There is no other place I'd rather be. Right here, right now. Watching the world wake up from history. Come, 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 whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. Ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come, 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 whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come, yet again, come, yet again, come, come, yet again, come, come, yet again, come.
celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of life. I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of living. I just want to celebrate another day of life. Don't let it all get you down, no, no. Don't let it turn you around. Don't let it all get you down, no, no. Don't let it turn you around. Don't let it all get you down, no, no. Don't let it turn you around.
I'm Pat Humphreys of Emma's Revolution. (laughs) 
I'm so pleased to have Reverend Nancy Palmer Jones with me tonight to uh, sing this song. The name of this year's General Assembly, Heartland Where Faiths Connect, could not be more appropriate. Some of you may not know, but my music partner, Sandy O, oh, had a heart attack earlier this month. She's recovering well, uh, but she won't be here this week. And um, for more, she sends her love, she's watching. And uh, for more details, come. <laughs> we love you, Sandy. We love you, Sand. Uh, come see me at the, at the booth in the exhibit hall. I'm glad to fill you in. Um, where faiths connect, this next song, Peace, Salam, Shalom, Sandy and I wrote after September 11th. We sang this song at the Parliament of World Religions. Uh, you'll hear more about that later. But we sang this song with a choir of 60 children for nearly 10,000 people. We sing this tonight in memory of those killed in Orlando. We sing to sing down the flames of Islamophobia, to fuel the work for responsible gun laws in this country. And we must use all the resources at our disposal to create a just and lasting peace in the Middle East and beyond. Perhaps including divestment. Please sing with us these words in English, Arabic, and Hebrew. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. That's your part. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. When he delivered the Ware Lecture at General Assembly in Louisville, Kentucky in 2013, Ibu Patel said that Unitarian Universalists have a theology of interfaith collaboration at our fingertips. When you express this theology of interfaith cooperation, he said, you give many gifts. The first is to share your own light. The second 
is to strengthen interfaith solidarity. And the third, perhaps somewhat counterintuitively, is to help strengthen the convictions of those with whom you speak. You, you interfaith activists have felt spiritual gifts like these over decades through engagement with international interreligious organizations, by organizing locally with neighbors of many faiths, and in nearly every imaginable way in between. In fact, our interfaith pathways have been full of jazz and hallelujahs, been full of chords of uncertainty, experiments with melody, displays of virtuosity, overtones of both pride and humility, and blessed harmonics of perseverance and recovery. In unbroken line with that tradition, more than 300 Unitarian Universalists brought their bodies and their souls to the Parliament of World Religions in Salt Lake City, Utah in October of 2015. And here on the video display board are some of the gifts they received through their participation. Please enjoy. Being a UU allows for an exchange of different kinds of ideas on religions. And that feeling was everywhere in the product. Being a UU at the Parliament of World's Religions, for me, was like being a kid in a candy shop. The Parliament of World Religions gave me hope for the future. It was a pure example of how all faiths can get along and learn and study and learn about each other. At the Parliament, I learned how important it is to live by our first principle, to respect every person. Lord, we're all doing the same thing all over the world. I just think this is a very natural place for us to be. It gives us the experience of peace on earth. A big piece of my identity is being able to work interfaithfully with people from many different faiths and many different beliefs by concentrating on really what some of the core values are that we share. I felt that being at the Parliament, it was very clear what some of those core values are. Values about justice, values about letting people have control over their own lives, uh, values of, of love and mutual respect. There were moments where it was almost overwhelming to have thousands of people in one place on the planet um, expressing so much love. And as a Unitarian Universalist, I have hope because imagine if we start from this place of openness and love that I experienced at the Parliament of World Religions. And that is our beginning place. And then if we can actually share our stories of who we are, our personal deep down stories of who we truly are. If we can be vulnerable with one another and be open to giving and receiving this kind of love, then we truly can begin the real work and change the changing of the world that needs to happen. This is where we start. Though Unitarian Universalists are small in numbers, we are a mighty people when we choose to be, and places like the Parliament are where we belong. people when we choose to be, and here at General Assembly is where we belong, exploring complex and beautiful themes. 
we draw from multiple prophetic voices and the world's religions. Interfaithfully, we learn from one another with stories and songs of politics, forgiveness, praise, and hope. As we enter into a meditation in the moments ahead, let us keep in mind the origins of the song, One Love, familiar to many, a song deep with meaning, expressing desires for love, justice, and self-determination. Bob Marley, a Rastafarian, wrote this anthem of forgiveness, praise, and hope in Jamaica in 1976, when the political situation was dire. Marley tried to stay politically neutral while offering peace and shelter however he could in the language of his beliefs. Let us join together in prayer. In the words of the Reverend Robert T. Weston, whose words today are as poignant as they were decades ago. An Army veteran of World War I and a Navy chaplain in World War II, Weston served Unitarian Universalist congregations in Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Kentucky, Nebraska, Florida, and California before retiring to Illinois. 
I invite you to respond to each section with the words, then our heart song will confirm we are better together. When we cease to divide ourselves into the included and the excluded, into the superior and inferior people, when mutual respect shall have replaced mutual distrust, and it is accepted that one person may excel in one field and others in another, while still others are content to enjoy the world as they find it, then our heart song will confirm we are better together. When all labor is respected without prejudice or favor, we shall know how to be ourselves with a joyful integrity, nor feel that another's preference violate our own or insist on that which prevents the integrity of any other and know no bitterness or envy. Then our heart song will confirm we are better together. When we grieve with the known sorrow of others and seek to share its burden. When we have learned to accept our mutual dependence, nor demand special privilege from the dependence of others, peace and plenty shall have been established on the earth. When we can rejoice with every joy of our fellow people and poverty will be a thing of the past, then our heart song will confirm we are better together. As the uplift of a lark's song and the sense of a glad new world at its morning, as the joy of youth in love rejoicing that the love is returned, so shall the spirit of humanity be when we have learned to discipline ourselves to live with a due concern for others, nor undertake to discipline them. But the time that this begins is now, and except it begin with you and me, it may never begin. When we cease to divide, then our heart song will confirm. We are better together. The bright banners move in circles around the vast convention center space so quickly. It's impossible to see them all and to still see the radiant smiles of the proud banner carriers. Our voices rise together in song, such a balm for the spirit to join as one in these days when our hearts are broken by continuing acts of violence and hatred. Days when our country feels so divided between those with privilege and those without. Our hearts, beating in sync, know that we are better together. Truly, we are so blessed to gather this evening by the glowing flame of our chalice, blessed to have our Thrive participants here nurturing our spirits with a dynamic model of empowering stronger, sustainable, and confident leadership. And like our aerialists this evening show us, when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable with each other, to take risks, it creates room for something amazing to happen, something new and exciting. We truly do thrive when we are gathered together. And what better place to be than Columbus, Ohio, here in the heartland? Yeah. 
Now I know for many of you from the coasts, this might seem like flyover territory. I know because growing up in the Washington DC area, that's how it was for me. But after more than 15 years here in the center of our country, let me tell you, this is rich, fertile ground for Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> Did you know that within a 100 mile radius of Columbus, there are over 20 Unitarian Universalist congregations with approximately 2,500 members, lay-led, minister-led, small and mid-sized congregations, representative in so many ways of our faith tradition. UU Justice Ohio is the statewide action network for the 38 congregations in the state. It not only joins together congregations, but also regions and covenantal communities. UU Justice Ohio knows that what the Southern region is telling us is true. We are better together, and in so many ways. I can't help but think that this might have been part of the vision of Jenkin Lloyd-Jones the general secretary of the group that planned the very first parliament of religions held in Chicago in 1893. That was the first time that Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Jews, Protestants, Catholics, Unitarians, and beyond all met together. Jones, the minister of All Souls Church in Chicago at the time, is credited for the presence of such liberal groups as the Ethical Culture Society, the Free Religious Association, and several women speakers from his own Unitarian denomination. Writing about Jones for the Harvard Square Library, Library Emily Mace says that Jones's role gave the gathering a more liberal, radical tone than it might otherwise have had. And so how fitting it is to have had such a grand Unitarian Universalist showing last October. Woohoo! Unfortunately, though, interfaith work is often hard for us, as natural as it seems it should be. Heck, we're still arguing about theism and humanism within some of our communities. What does this mean when we try to cross borders and work interfaithfully? Y'all are the ones who have to answer this. Speaking to this 120 years after that first parliament, Ibu Patel said he believes an important task of an interfaith leader is to help build relationships with it, between people with profoundly different views on fundamental theological and political matters. Interfaith leadership, he says, is about building relationships with people who are not only different from you in ways you like, but also in ways you don't like. wise man. Writing in Today's Children and Yesterday's Heritage in 1952, Sophia Lyon Foz said the religious way is the way that touches universal relationships, that goes high and wide and deep, that expands the feeling of kinship. If we want to be interfaith leaders, we cannot let our differences get in the way of expanding the feelings of kinship with others, even others we disagree with. It means we must stop dividing ourselves along religious or theological or even political lines. Because when we participate interfaithfully, we are better together.
We are better together because we are stronger together. Thrive folks know this and experience it firsthand in their peer posse, right? Thank you. <laughs> Many of us know the Aesop fable of a bundle of sticks where a parent demonstrates that one person, like one twig, can be broken. But if the people stand together, they are stronger, like a bundle of sticks. There you go. <laughs> I had to prove it was real. Echoing this on her eponymous show, Supergirl recently shared that the famous S stands for the Khalil family model, motto, El Mayara, which in Kryptonian means stronger together. Supergirl says she doesn't want to be a hero like her cousin, someone who goes it alone. Instead, she has friends and family who know her secret and can help her. And certainly, we know that we are stronger together. This is why, in part, the Mid-America region passed a resolution on Muslim solidarity at a regional assembly this year. In light of the increasing discrimination that Muslims experience in this country, in light of a political candidate who not only endorses but calls for such discrimination, and then drawing on our own Unitarian Universalist values, history, and principle, the region resolved to build bridges of partnership to increase our understanding of Islam and to work together for a greater inclusion for all people. When we come together like this tonight or in statewide justice networks, across congregations or interfaithfully, we are better together because we are stronger together. And we are better together because we are smarter together. Alone, we have our own opinions and feelings and ideas, and that's great. But it can also become an echo chamber. When people come together, we add new opinions, new feelings, and new ideas, deepening our pool of shared meaning. And the more people and perspectives that we add to the mix, the deeper and wider the pool becomes. This is one of my favorite things about really good meetings or gatherings, the synergy that comes when one group's ideas builds on another's, and we come up with something so much better than we could have come up with on our own. I saw this recently at a Mid-America Regional Board meeting when we were meeting with Detroit area imams and community leaders to present them with signed, laminated copies of the resolution on solidarity that had been passed at regional assembly. After the presentation, we were brainstorming ways that we could take this partnership and make it larger. The ideas that came out of that meeting were inspiring, and I went home with concrete actions that I never would have come up with on my own, and maybe we wouldn't have come up with if it were just Unitarian Universalists. It took all of us present there, across our various faith traditions, pooling our ideas together. We are smarter together. And we are better together because we are more compassionate together. I've seen this in my own life, how our faith has caused me to expand my thinking, and when I practice it with integrity, how I am forced to confront my own inherent judgmentalism, which is indeed the opposite of compassion. Through my involvement and participation in Unitarian Universalist organizations, I have worked with, talked with, listened to, listened to people who I never would have met otherwise. At a recent UU gathering, I was moved to hear the stories of some of our youth and young adults of color, 
stories of how difficult it is growing up today, not just in the larger society, but even in our congregations. Their stories have remained with me, urging me to stop and look. Thanks, Kenny. Urging me to pay attention so that I might be a better ally, both within and outside our congregations and covenanted communities. When we come together and share our experiences with one another, we become more compassionate because we understand in our hearts, we grok, we know at the core of our being things that we didn't before, and our hearts grow bigger as a result. We are also better together because we are able to accomplish more together the congregation I serve, First Unitarian Church in Louisville, Kentucky, has been learning this firsthand this year as we are new members of a local faith-based justice-seeking organization. We're partnering in areas we agree on, access to jobs and transportation, the destructive nature of payday lending, restorative practices in local schools, and the need for affordable housing. I've seen a growing number of our folks get involved and work for change in these areas. I've seen how we're a more formidable force and able to accomplish more when we stand with other people of faith, even when there is much we disagree on, because it's not always easy. For instance, many of the congregations we're working with don't approve of women in ministry, but we join together to work on the issues upon which we agree because we are able to accomplish more together. And finally, we are better together because we are more courageous together. I will always carry with me an experience at General Assembly in Portland last year. After a very difficult floor session debating the wording for the Black Lives Matter action of immediate witness, there was a Black Lives Matter rally held outside the convention center. Reverend Seiko, a noted Ferguson, Missouri activist, called on those of us gathered, mostly white, to be more than allies to be freedom fighters. People formed a circle around a nearby intersection blocking traffic. At the center of the circle, a smaller group laid down and performed a die-in, lying on the ground for four minutes, one minute for each hour that Michael Brown's body lay on the road in Ferguson. I knew I wanted to participate in that die-in that I wanted to be a part of what I felt was an important way to put my faith into action with my fellow co-religionists. I wanted not just to be part of the circle, but to lay my body down for the cause. But I was scared. I turned to my colleague, the Reverend Jan Taddeo, minister of our congregation in Lawrenceville, Georgia, I want to do this, but I am afraid, I said. Me too, she said. And so we clasped hands and went and lay down in the road together for four very long minutes. We held hands the whole time. It didn't matter if our theologies were the same or different. It didn't matter whether we, our politics were in alignment or not. It didn't matter if we agreed on anything. Her presence gave me courage. I couldn't have done it without her. We are more courageous together. Together, as we are right now at this moment and through General Assembly and whenever we work across congregations, in state justice networks, in coalitions, in peer posses, and in interfaith efforts, our love for each other, our support for one another, enables us to be stronger, more compassionate. 
It enables us to accomplish more, to be more courageous. As Unitarian Universalists and interfaithfully, we are better together. And when we have the when we come together, we have the capacity to create something beautiful, something wonderful, something inspiring. Tonight truly, truly is amazing, and it will be an amazing General Assembly. As we mourn yet again, and as we recommit, as we learn and grow and heal together. The echoes of the banner parade with colorful fabrics representing each congregation and covenantal community guided us into this spirit of worship. It reminds me of a favorite tune from Stevie Wonder. You know, Stevie Wonder from nearby Saginaw, Michigan, who has gifted the world with songs and a spirit of activism across borders and boundaries with his work to make Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday a holiday in the United States and his role as a United Nations messenger of peace. Let us enter into a grateful meditation with this song sung by Mark David and with aerial performances by the amazing giants on this special day and in this special heartland space. Find strength in each t- 
Can you hear it? The thriving heartbeat of our faith. We are here, connected, and charged for what is to come. We grow most when we are outside our comfort zones. And so we invite you, this General Assembly, to challenge yourself, to move outside your comfort zone and to practice listening to the stories of others, not grilling them about their positions or beliefs, not arguing with them, not trying to change their mind and get them to agree with you, and not starting a conversation with a specific agenda. Simply practice listening deeply. If you are a humanist, struggling with theism. Consider bringing your open mind and heart to the UU Christian Fellowship's communion service on Friday. If you are a theist who is struggling with humanism, maybe bring your open mind and heart to listening to the Humanist Voices workshop on Saturday. Whether you're a humanist, theist, pagan, or something else entirely, if you're the type who prefers worship to be a sermon sandwich, consider going to Reverend Erica Hewitt's workshop, Beyond the Word, Sensory Rich Worship, on Friday. If you prefer to think or write about justice rather than engage it physically, we invite you to gather on Thursday with our multi-faith partners for an interfaith public witness event, focusing on truth-telling, fortification, and commitment to boldly work for black liberation. If you are struggling with white privilege, you might want to consider attending spiritual practices for white discomfort led by the Youth and Young Adult Office and Standing on the Side of Love. It's on Thursday. There are so, so many opportunities to shift out of our comfort zones here at General Assembly, to give ourselves the opportunity to grow and change. And as you do, we encourage you to connect with others and ask them about their experiences. Listen to them. And maybe, if you are invited, share your experience too. Taking risks like this, making ourselves vulnerable, can be difficult. But as our wonderful aerialists have shown us, Taking risks allows for something amazing to happen, something new and something exciting. It will be a wonderful General Assembly. But before we leave, let us join our voices one more time for Jazz Alleluia. <laughs>
us expand the feelings of kinship with one another and interfaithfully. And may this shape our General Assembly experience this year. May we remember that we are smarter. How are we smarter? Together. Thank you. And that we are more compassionate. Together. Let's remember that we are stronger together. That we are more courageous together. And that we can accomplish more together. And so we will go to workshops together and to general sessions together and to worship together and to the public witness event together. And why, why do we do all this? Because we are better together. Amen, blessed be, and may it be so. And it 
Ha, ha, ha. 